Good morning and welcome to this special edition of Sunday at Home, which we're sharing with you on Good Friday, April 15th, 2022. My name is Leanne Friesen. I'm the lead pastor at Moe Hamilton, and this is Leslie Makins, our associate pastor, who many of you will also know. And today we're so glad that we can come together again online in this way to remember and pause together. Good Friday is a heavy day for those of us who love Jesus. It's a day of reflection and it's a day of contemplation. And this service will be about contemplating what happened on the cross. We will join together in a time of communion. And so we invite you to uh, have some food and some drink ready for the end of the service. In our tradition, we believe that this act of communion is an act of remembering and the things that we eat and drink are symbols to help us do that. So whatever you use can absolutely work for you. As we begin, Leslie's going to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. God, on this somber Good Friday, we come before you humbled at what happened on the cross this day. We pray you would be with us, stir us, nudge us speak to us today as we remember what jesus did on the cross in jesus name amen and now pastor sam is going to lead us in some music uh, as he will do throughout the service for us and then after each of our songs we're going to have a series of readings that allow us to enter into that story of what happened on the first good friday <laughs> survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My richest gain I count but lost and poor content. sacrifice them to his blood see from his head his hands his feet sorrow and love flow mingle down did it such love and sorrow They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders, and the teachers of the law came together. Peter followed him at a distance, right into the courtyard of the high priest. There he sat with the guards and warmed himself at the fire. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin were looking for evidence against Jesus so they could put him to death, but they didn't find any. Many testified falsely against him, but their statements did not agree. Then some stood up and gave this false testimony against him. We heard him say, I will destroy this temple 
made with human hands, and in three days we'll build another, not made with human hands. Yet even then their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony that these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent and gave no answer. Again the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? I am, said Jesus, and you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming on the clouds of heaven. The high priest tore his clothes. Why do we need any more witnesses, he asked. You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as worthy of death. Then some began to spit at him. They blindfolded him, struck him with their fists and said, prophesy. And the guards took him and beat him. Very early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and the teachers of the law and the whole Sanhedrin made their plans. So they bound Jesus, led him away and handed him over to Pilate. Are you the king of the Jews? asked Pilate. You have said so, Jesus replied. The chief priests accused him of many things. So again, Pilate asked him, are you going to answer? See how many things they are accusing you of? But Jesus made no reply and Pilate was amazed. Now it was the custom at the festival to release a prisoner whom the people requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison with the insurrectionists who had committed murder in the uprising. The crowd came up and asked Pilate to do for them what he usually did. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews, asked Pilate, knowing it was out of self-interest that the chief priests had handed Jesus over to him. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have Pilate release Barabbas instead. What shall I do then with the one you call the king of the Jews, Pilate asked him. Crucify him, they shouted. Why? What crime has he committed, asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, crucify him, wanting to satisfy the crowd. Pilate released Barabbas to them. He had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led Jesus away into the palace, that is, the praetorium, and called together the whole company of soldiers. They put a purple robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on him. And they began to call out to him, Hail, King of the Jews! Again and again they struck him on the head with a staff and they spit on him. Falling on their knees, they paid homage to him. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A certain man from Cyrene, Simon, the father of Alexander and Rufus, was passing by on his way from the country and they forced him to carry the cross. They brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of the skull. On a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross. The dearest and best For a world of lost sinners was slain So I'll cherish the old rugged cross So my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown So despised by the world Has a wondrous attraction for me For the dear Lamb of God Left his glory above To bear it to dark Calvary So I'll cherish the old rugged cross To my trophy at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown In the old rugged cross Stained with blood so divine The wondrous beauty I see suffered and died to pardon and sanctify 
by me So I'll cherish the old rugged cross Till my trophies at last I lay down I will cling to the old rugged cross And exchange it someday for a crown To the old rugged cross I will ever be true It's shame and reproach Gladly bear I will call me someday To my home far away Where his glory forever I'll share So I'll cherish the old rugged cross To my trophies at last I lay down to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown Two other men, both criminals, were also led out with him to be executed. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there. Along with the criminals, one on the right and the other on the left, Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes by casting lots. Like you, Jesus, may our last word be forgiveness. The people stood watching and the rulers even smeared at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself if he is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you're the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was written notice above him which read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said, since you're under the same sentence? We are punished justly, for we're getting what our deeds deserve, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Like you, Jesus, may our last word be salvation. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Like, like you, Jesus, Jesus, may our last word be connection. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing near heard this, they said, listen, he's calling Elijah. Someone ran, filled a sponge with wine vinegar, put it on a staff and offered it to Jesus to drink. Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes down, he said. Like, like you, Jesus, Jesus, may our last word be honest. honest. Later, knowing that everything had now been finished, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it and put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Like, like you, Jesus, may our last word be faithful. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, for the sun stopped shining, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. The centurion, seeing what had happened, praised God and said, Surely this was a righteous man. Like, like you, Jesus, may our last word be trust. 
We long for other last words, but we give them to you. May we be like you. May our last word be love. Well, at this point in our service of remembering what happened on the cross that day so long ago, we're going to stop and we're going to celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper is something that we do and have done over thousands of years to remember, to stop, to pause, and to consider what Jesus did for us on that cross. And we've just heard the story, and maybe some of the story Something resonated with you that never did before. Or maybe the story is very familiar to you and uh, you find that this is a very meaningful, uh, appropriate way for us to come into the Lord's Supper. So I invite you to take some food and some drink. These are symbols we use to remember what Jesus has done for us. And I'm going to read to you from Scripture, from the book of 1 Corinthians. It says this, for I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so that's what we're going to do together today. Um, you can get out your drink and um, your food, whatever you happen to have. I'm going to be using this little cup, which has a little wafer and some grape juice in it. 
And I invite you to take your piece of bread, your food, Take, eat. The body of Christ was broken for you. And then take your drink. Take, drink. The blood of Christ was shed for you. Whenever we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's pray. God, we're grateful for this Lord's Supper that we celebrate over and over again to constantly proclaim your death, for constantly to remember and to hold dear what happened on this Good Friday so many years ago. In Jesus' name, amen. with me fast falls the even tide the darkness deepens lord with me abide when other helpers fail and comforts flee help of the helpless soul abide with me Swift to its close, ebbs out life's little day. Earth's joys grow dim, its glories pass away. Change and decay in all around I see. O thou who changest not, abide with me. Thy presence every passing hour What but thy grace can foil the tempter's power Who like thyself my guide and stay can be Through cloud and sunshine oh, abide with me I fear no foe with thee at hand to bless. Ills have no weight and tis no bitterness. Where is death sting? Where grave thy victory? I triumph still if thou abide.